that's a nice page. So spin jumped up from 6,500 to 7,400 with actually less loft delivered at impact. Okay. That's, I love that. Still curving a little bit. Yeah. I think we can take a little bit more of that away. Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. Delighted to be back in New York. And we wouldn't be in New York without Paige. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. Nice to see you. Yeah, you as well. You've been traveling a little bit, I've been seeing. You've been playing a bit of golf. Yes, yeah, I've actually been working on my game. That was one of my goals mm. for 2024, was to get really good at yeah. golf and just start to enjoy it and play more and keeping a handicap for the first wow. time in are you really? years, years, not since probably college or junior huh. golf. So what is the handicap? So it's a little skewed right now. Mm -hmm. I put three scores in. I kind of forgot how a handicap worked. Right. And I'm currently a plus six. Which <laughs> <laughs> I, I, uh, Set the bar high. Yeah, Love 72, that. 71, and a 69. And uh, I was looking. And I again, I play a little bit farther back. Yeah. And for you know women with a handicap. So I thought it was going to be pretty bad. And I could get it better. But now we're just going to try to hopefully maintain and not get <laughs> ruin it too much. That's a high standard to maintain, yeah. but amazing uh, that you're doing that because it keeps you keeps us all accountable, doesn't yeah. it? Mm -hmm. One of the things I hated about being uh, a pro was was not having some metric that allowed me to know like am I playing quite well right now or or, or badly. So I love that you're doing that. That's awesome. Yeah, very cool. Well, we dived into your took a deep dive in your bag last year. Um, you were saying nothing much has changed in the head covers, mm -hmm. same stuff? Yeah, head covers are um, almost the same, clubs yep. are almost all the same, okay. except for I have some new babies in my bag. I said I think this last time, I have been a Mizuno girl yeah. through and through, always mm. love their clubs, and I was doing a best of 2023 with Club Champion, mm last year and they said you should try these tricks on irons out and i was a little hesitant at first but they actually for me out tested the mizuno irons and they're still pretty new in the bag i got them yeah. about uh i would say two and a half three weeks ago oh wow yes wow. <laughs> very very new <laughs> It was funny, I got them and then I did a, a collaboration with someone and you know, he was asking me what my yardages are and I'm like, I honestly don't know. Don't know yet. <laughs> Figure it out. <laughs> yeah. Played um, in another event and I noticed that although they felt really great, mm. hot off the face, that they were turning over a little bit more okay. than what I'm used to and everything else in my bag has been going straight, which mm -hmm. for me that signals that there is probably a loft and lie issue so i would love to go over that okay. today that would be that would be awesome and one of the, the the kind of lowest of low hanging fruit things that any golfer can do is loft and lie checks and especially customers of ours any customer who buys clubs through us has that guarantee has that offer to come back in and For check free. loft and lies <laughs> at any time come and do it come mm -hmm. and use us build the relationship with the fitter that, that we want to have with our client base I, i've said this on a number of times page I've always looked at the coaching community and I've been a little jealous that coaches and players have a bond. Mm -hmm. Club fitters and players don't have a bond. <laughs> They're, because people think that the club fitter's here to sell me something. It doesn't have to be that way. We want to service your equipment, making sure that lofts, lies, weights, swing weights, grips, whatever it might be, are all perfect for you every time. We want to give you that competitive advantage. And if you don't have that, it's, you know, it's on you. But I think there's still a a trust that has to be built between the fitter and the player. Like, uh, if I walk in, they're not going to try and sell me something, yeah. are they? But I think people think that. <laughs> yeah, 100%. So, um, yeah, let's let's do that. I think that would be awesome. And great for you guys to see um, the process uh, and where we're at. How often should people come in to get their loft and lies I know when yeah. I travel a lot, sometimes they get a little bit bent or if Absolutely. you're practicing and I've been practicing off of mats, yep. it's cold right now. Sure. And I know that can also impact the, yeah. the changing your clubs just slightly. It does. Um, yeah, the travel's huge yeah. for sure. The mats also, I would say to any golfer who plays a decent amount of golf in the year, at least twice, start the year and middle of the year. Yeah. Just, just kind of try and have it as a, as a sort of twice a year visit to see your club fitter, get them checked out, come and hang out. Hit, you know, we're in the New York store, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Go hit some putts while you're, you know, your fitter's checking your loft lies. Have a drink, hang out, watch the golf channel, whatever you want to do, <laughs> right? There's so, just, it doesn't take long. 
it's, it's probably about a 30 minute process for us to run through them all, make sure they're all good, nice and easy. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Okay, Paige, we're gonna start with your pitch and wedge. I just asked, have you ever been to St. Andrews? Uh, you have to play the old course. You have to do it, it's a pilgrimage. I know. You have to. I know, it's on the bucket list it's for totally sure. It's totally on the bucket list. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's, that's on the list. Okay, so we're doing uh, a little loft and lie test on 18, looking back at the old town. <laughs> um, yeah, let's, let's just hit a few with your wedge. Let's see okay. what we see. Are you noticing shape with uh, lower lofted clubs, higher lofted clubs? What, what are you seeing? Every club. Everything. Yeah, every okay. iron. It's moving okay. um, just slightly left, which I don't mind. I've been working on my swing path. Yeah. Um, I tend to come a little bit over and sure. steep on it, yep. and I'm coming a little bit more now underneath it. Good. And it feels much better, so I don't mind seeing a tiny bit of a draw. Yeah. It starts a little right and mm. falls on the left side. Problem is that it's moving hard right. <laughs> left and they feel like really good swings okay so that's just been the issue with with everything and so if my, my pitching wedge and nine mm. i can control it a little bit easier because i tend to hit more of a knockdown kind of controlled flighted Punchy shot shell. with those yeah. but when it comes to um seven six and five is my uh, longest iron okay. it really turns over it turns good um, so I'd love to do that. I'd love to go through. So you, you have five through to pitch and wedge. I'd love to just hit them all because I think once we have data on them all, we're going to show people what the implications are, what the sort of um, knock on effect of not having correct loft and lies are. There's distance control issues. There's, there's, of, um, there's height issues as well when you start losing spin and you know, at a point where you lose some loft, the spin comes down, the ball flight gets too flat, yeah. too, you know, it comes in too shallow into the fairway. So we'll get into all of that, but yeah, let's hit a few with your wedge. Good swing, Paige. That was nice. What's your, um, what's your number on wedge? What are you comfortable carrying it? Um, I would say I hit this when it, like 120, 125. Sure. Again, since they're still new, and they are moving a little mm -hmm. bit left. I'm not really sure what my carry and what my final distance is. Right. I noticed that since, uh, again, my miss seems to be a little bit of a pull, mm -hmm. that there's a, there's inconsistencies where when I hit it great, it's like 120. Oh. I can get this up to like 132. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's quite shocking when right. that thing just like flies out. When it out. turns over. It's a hot face. And then especially when you, you turn it over, mm -hmm. it, it's just inconsistent. Right that's now. actually a brilliant point about the hot face because the way the irons are are being developed now, they're designed to be like almost have wood DNA. Yeah. Like have the same trampoline effect. You know, there's a there's a COR element to them now where, where there's a an amount of speed that comes off them. So spin is the only way to regulate that. It's like it's like flyers. You know, if you if you can't regulate the spin, like you're getting flyers when you never expect it. How do you ever pick a club at that point? So it's, it's tough, that's, yeah. a, that's a good point. Okay, those numbers were, were really nice. I mean, that was, that was a, a good amount of spin. So I'll be curious if that can, if we can maintain that or does it fluctuate down if we turn it a bit more? Let's see a few more. So there, there's a little bit in it there. So I kind of saw the first two, I'm like, amazing. Like 8,300, 8,400. And then I see one at 76 and it doesn't take much when you <clears throat> when you see the spin drop like that. A little bit of a of a sort of faster ball spin, a little drop in spin. That's where we get that extra few yards. We start hitting it over the back of the green. Yeah. But um, but I can definitely see what you mean about the path. It's you know typically our shorter clubs are the ones that have the the sort of most neutral path. It, it, it can be that way. Um, and five to the right, it probably does mean there's gonna be some shape when we lose loft. Yeah. So I totally get it. Can I have two more with this one and then we'll go to nine. Really nice. How'd that one feel? Good. Good. Yeah, that yeah. was good. Good. Yeah, those those numbers are excellent. I mean, there's certain things I'm just watching as, as we go along and if we see, like I can always think about how if someone's hit a good one by how do they retain ball speed um and then ultimately how we manage that in terms of consistency of flight is is then when we start getting into spin rate so speed and spin and and, and launch obviously being the third 
partner to that yeah. little trio um, is how we judge was it a good strike or not. But those those looked really, really nice in terms of um, like a standard deviation from what we consider a good one. Those are amazing. Good. Let's do one more. That was a hot one. Yeah. You see it just, and that swing felt really good. Yeah, it almost really felt good. the exact same as the last one and it just <laughs> shoots. <laughs> a little more. Let's have a look at that. Um, okay. I'm not going to go too much on this one. And the reason for that is when we have loft, we produce a little bit more spin and the ball flight is stable. Uh, when we get start getting to like the seven and the six, I'm going to think that we might start to see those ones shape a little bit yeah. more. So um, I'll take, I want to take a look at it, maybe, maybe nudge it one down, just so you know that if you have to hit a, a hard pitching wedge, you don't fear that left. Yeah. Um, okay. I'm going to trade you. Let's see the nine. Okay, Paige, let's, uh, let's have a look at this one. What's your uh, gaps between the, the clubs? Is it 10 yards, something, 11 yards? I would say 10 yards is what I normally okay. just off the bat. So this go is with. like 130 one yes. ish. Okay, mm -hmm. good. That's a big jumping ball speed. Yeah, so. That's a big jumping ball speed. <laughs> shouldn't happen, right? <laughs> no. No. From us looking like we're 8,000 in spin to going at 2,000 less, like this club is at a quarter inch longer yeah. and you're marginally quicker. It's a jumper. <laughs> cool. <laughs> you hit that one even better, but just cooking. Okay. This is worth uh, an intervention at this point because <laughs> we know that's not what it should be no. doing. Okay. I, I don't hit my nine iron um, 146 yards. Yeah, I mean, and, and you're doing, all a golfer can ever ask is that when you hit a good shot, you make a good swing, yeah. you get a good result. Yeah. That's, that's all we can ever ask. So you couldn't hit those last two any better. No. And, and they've absolutely flown off the planet for you. So <laughs> let's, let's dial that back. Spin number I would love to see would be, actually it's going to be about a thousand more. Yeah. Um, so lie and, and loft will play a part in that as well. Okay. okay. I think I think we might see this be a bit strong in the lofts. Okay. Okay. Okay, Paige, we made a little adjustment. We don't need our nine irons flying like, <laughs> yeah, little rockets. Yeah. <laughs> um, I made a little loft lie adjustment. This, this okay. should be a little better. I'm targeting about 130, even 132. I'm, I'm okay if there's like a couple of yards when you hit a really good one. Spin rate is going to be, I'm hoping, we might want to talk golf ball in a second, but I'm thinking we're probably going to be 68 to 7,000 on okay. the spin, is what I would hope. Let's, uh, let's try a couple. How'd that one feel? Good. Not bad? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, spin's definitely up, ball speed's definitely a little down and, and our carry number's down as a result. Let me, let me see two more, and then we'll uh, maybe strengthen it back one more. That sounded, that sounded really nice. That's probably where I thought we would sort of be. So that was 129, carry 6,700 spin. What do you love about the TP5 golf ball? I feel like it reacts really well in the wind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good wind ball. And yep. that's kind of really the only reason sure. why I okay. play it. Um, feels good around the greens for me. I think if we can get a golf ball that spins just a little bit more, um, we may be able to sort of help some of the other numbers I'm seeing here. Because th that was that was really good. So you have 41 degrees aloft in this club. At impact, you have 30. So what is more important than what I do in the loft lie machine is what number you get at yeah. impact. That's the only number that really matters. So if I look at where your wedge was, so 33, 33, you know, sorry, 33.8, 34, 32. So really consistent. And then immediately, so the first two you hit were at 28. So there's like a six degree difference yeah. in dynamic loft. That's why you were getting that extra half club. Um, we're a little bit better in here, so we should be seeing probably 30 is going to be about the ideal number. Okay. I may just, I may just strengthen this just a little touch more okay. and uh, just get it back on. I, I would like that carry number to not be at 129 on your very best, 
like 131 to 129. I agree. Yeah. Right? Okay, so I think the magic number here is going to be probably 20, probably 29 and a half, okay. right? Somewhere around about that. Really nice page, 29.8. Uh, the strike sounded a hair high in the blade. Okay. Just yeah. a little bit. So 29.8 and 29.6. That one's jumped again though. And that's on that spin. So you're delivering. That's why I think golf ball. Because you actually delivered it exactly as I wanted on the yeah. dynamic loft number, but you got a you got a jumpy one. Uh -huh. Let's let's go to something that's going to spin just a little bit more. That's nice, Paige. So spin jumped up from sixty five hundred to seventy four hundred, with actually less loft delivered at impact. Okay, that's. I love that. Still curving a little bit. Yeah. I think we can take a little bit more of that away. Do you, um, do you think it's because my if I work on the swing path a little bit, I might have overcooked it maybe. a little too inside? That it, it'll it be could interesting be the... to see. So I would say there's two dominant movement patterns I see from players. Um, I see players who sequence and open up really nicely. The longer the club is, the actually the more they open up. Yeah. And there's players who, if you give them a longer club, just as a virtue of it being longer, it stays behind them for, for you know, longer and then they, they kind of flip at it. I would imagine you're probably more of the, someone who opens up really nicely mm -hmm. and your numbers, your club path gets lower as the club gets longer. Yeah. Is that what you've seen in yes. the past? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I wouldn't mind going a touch flatter for now. But back to what we talked about at the start, you can drop in and, and get these chains. If you yeah. start to see that five become three or mm -hmm. two, whatever, we'll just, we'll just nudge it back okay. up, okay? It's funny how just some clubs, like Wedge was so easy. Like it was <laughs> right on the money. And some clubs just are- To work with Are just bit. harder, yeah. So carry number one, 29.5. Really, really good on ball speed, 100 miles an hour, dynamic lofts up just a touch. So that's nice. Yeah. So well, the wedges that we loved, like we said, were on autopilot, 50, 50.5, 50 49 all kind of coming down quite a bit in the nine iron. The minute we get the, the kind of spec right, 50 yeah. back, back in that Perfect. nice, nice window again. Um, and that was just a lovely push draw right, yeah. right back on. Uh, okay, show me one more just like that, but I think, I think we're perfect there. So good, Paige. So yeah. good. That one felt great. Yeah, that's why I love doing these types of tests <laughs> because when you, when you kind of get it right and, and all these numbers start to make sense, and that's why we use data, because we can quantify what a good shot is and what a good shot isn't. Yep. And everything that we kind of had talked about there in terms of your carry number, the amount of spin we wanted, the dynamic loft number, the height, the land angle, like it's all part of the Rubik's Cube puzzle and we're just shifting the, the pieces around the Rubik's Cube just to make sure we get uh, obviously the right result. That nine iron's perfect. Yeah, it's nine. perfect. Okay, awesome. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Let's see. I think we think we know what we're going to see, but I'm going to fast forward this because I think we're seeing we're both the same seeing thing. what we yeah what we yeah. thought we'd see. Let's. I think we know from the wedge and nine what was good there. Let's just take the rest of the set and adjust them accordingly to those, and then let's come back because. We, this is exactly the same thing as we saw with the nine iron spin. 61, 6200 on spin. This is at 54, 5500 round up. But all the same things, like land angles came down into the mid 40s. Now we, t we had it at 50. Yeah. So we, we know where we need to go. All right, let me, let me grab that. And I'll need a couple of minutes. I'm gonna leave these two here. <laughs> as I even jumped. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> You've had quite the beautiful, delay. Beautiful, beautiful. Lovely. Hot pink. Mm, okay. There we go. Better distance. Okay. 
It's nice that they're starting right and kind of staying there. Yeah, there's there's not that kind of crossing of the line. Yeah. I think that's going to be really nice. Love it. Yeah, so much better. Really like it. Does that feel good that they're not really turning um, Yeah, it feels well. like I can swing freely without trying to hold it off. It's interesting you say that because your club head, I'm watching your club head speed and, and it just, it's you know, it starts to tick up. Yeah. yeah. So that's always a good sign. Someone's feeling pretty confident. Yeah. Okay, one more. I think golf ball is a big part of this puzzle. I really do. I think having that Pro V1X or... Callaway do a really good version, Chrome Tour X. Really? Yep, they, their, their ball is amazing this year. Um, I they think always it, felt a little too soft for me in the past. Yep. And the last time I tried it was probably seven years, six or seven years ago when they first came the out. The original Chrome Soft. Yeah. <laughs> so they, they kind of like abandoned ship on that whole like soft, feels marshmallow sort of feel. Yeah. This Chrome Tour X is it's actually very firm but it has a really spinny cover. Okay. So like, I know you love your shots around the greens. Yeah. That's your bread and butter. That will give you all of that. But in the long game, you'll get the benefits of maybe a little bit more distance, Ooh. a little higher apex. So I think maybe there's a video okay, with try us that. trying that down the line. Uh, okay, seven. Let's see, um, let's see how this looks. Feels really solid off really the face. Really good. We might need to just back this one off a little bit. <laughs> um, the the ball speeds sort of really took a jump. We look at where we were. Really nice ones with the, yeah. the uh, eight were like 105, and this has jumped up to quickly to 110. Okay. Do you think that so with my irons, I always play the most forgiving head. Do you think that might be a part of the issue here? Because I like the fact that when I miss hit it, yeah. it still flies. But I have started to notice that mm -hmm. now that I'm practicing and really working on my game Boy. and on my swing mechanics, that I'm getting those kind of hot, <laughs> off the face shots that I haven't yeah. really seen in a while. I think you're exactly right. Okay. But it's okay to have that head style. We just. This is now, so there's two mods, the ZX5, ZX7. Yeah. These are now the lofts of the ZX7. Okay. So they're the weaker version of the lofts. Yours are actually one strong of the ZX5 lofts. So you're basically that half club. And I was wanting to see how it played out because consistency of distance is more important than how far it goes. Yeah. Especially a good player who, who is happy hitting a, an eight rather than a nine or a seven rather than an eight. So... I think uh, we're just going to go with some weaker lofts for you, but you can okay. still stay in that head that gives you forgiveness. As much as sort of you, your your schedule, your work schedule can be so busy that yeah. you're not maybe spending as much time practicing. You're maybe just going from shoot to shoot, playing all the time, and you want to know that your your clubs are not going to be that <laughs> demanding of you yeah. every week. Mm -hmm. I think that's still an important part of, of your, your setup. Hit me two more. That last one really jumped, but I want to see if that's... Nine. It's close. I just need it to be two yards less. Okay. okay. 156 is a hair long. Okay. One degree weaker, that's all. Okay. One degree for you should be two and a half yards. Okay. So it should be right on a 154 number. That sounded really good. So we may have slightly overcooked the lie. It yeah. seems like almost hard to turn this one back I over. I agree with that. Because the one thing with somebody who draws the ball, they have to draw the ball. <laughs> has to come back, right? So the minute you start just leaving them hanging out there, yeah. um, and you're you're really consistent on your club head speed. So um, I like where we are with dynamic loft. I like where we are with the carry. All of that's good. Just nudge it back up for you one more time. Okay. That looked that looked amazing. Yeah. One fifty three point yeah. five, right in our number. Okay. Good. Really good ball speed. We're going to be slightly off in our carry by a couple of yards purely because the face was a tad yeah. open. We're seeing that club path come down now. Yeah. That's that's starting to happen. 
Paradise, Paige. I kind of miss hitting my seven iron. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> no. Where are those flyers again? No, it's consistent. <laughs> know what they do. That's really good. Amazing. Yeah. So good. Easy. Yeah. So this one's a little bit up for debate. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so long irons go in three degree increments sh into the mid and short irons four. I left them at four degree increments because you don't have a hybrid right now and you've got a seven. Yeah. So I kind of wanted to build in a club for you that would be just like that, flatter and go a little further, knowing that your next club can go way up, right? So you're heighting that when it's 70 feet. I think if we hit your seven wood right now, you'd probably hit it at 90 feet, yeah. some, something like that. Is that something you think would be useful just as almost like a, a punch shot club if you're back into the wind, you can flight it down? Yeah, I would prefer have an have... option there. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because we had one six, I had 165 down for your six iron, I had 177 down for your five iron. It's not far away, we're 180, right? So yeah. it's not like it's, it's that much further, but do think it gives you another option um, mm -hmm. that you don't have in the bag right now. Yeah, I okay. like that. Let's get a couple more. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Shot shapes are good, aren't they? They're tight. So yeah. we'll just like push draw, push draw. So, I mean, I'll try, I'll clean this up for the sake of, of showing sort of like an overlay as well, because we've still got a little mixture. But when we see these, we're just going to see this lovely little incremental sort of circle every 10 yards um, along the way. And the early ones, obviously, we were sort of getting a little bit left of the line. Now, with anything, we're staying just right of the line. Mm -hmm. So the big thing is I can't wait for you to see these on the golf course. Yeah. That's where it's going to really mean something. You're going to hit one, you're like, oh, geez, I remember that one felt left. And it's going to just hang on its line, yeah. frozen rope. It's going to look amazing. So... I love it. I love yeah. it. Does that feel well balanced in terms of the progression? Does yeah. Does it feel good? Yeah, so much better. Okay. Um, it just feels now that I can swing a little bit more freely. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like I have to hold it off no, or um, be nervous about how far it's going to fly. Yeah, yeah. My issue before I got these irons is that I would come up short with everything. Right. And the last couple of times I played, I was flying all these greens, yeah. <laughs> which you don't want to be behind a lot of greens. Yeah. And I didn't know why, and the swings felt good, and everything felt good. And so it's nice knowing that I have confidence in my clubs now and that they're going the right distance consistently. Totally. And uh, everything else that I know it's my swing and, and mm. not the clubs. Very cool, awesome. Okay, Paige, we've got you dialed. Mm -hmm. I'm really excited to see these irons on the golf course. One of the key things I think we Im sort of implemented there as well was the golf ball change. I think a big part of any loft and live fit is always gonna be what golf ball do you play? Um, that's why we have options in here, obviously, whether you're Pro V1, Pro V1X, Left Dash, AVX, because obviously uh, TrackMan and RCT, every golfer should be paying attention to the golf ball, right? So yeah. you're a TP5 gal for now. <laughs> uh, I've given you a couple to think about and, and test them. And, and like, I can't wait to hear once you're out there, what, what do you see in the golf course? What sort of different shots do you have? And if you've lost any, mm -hmm. do you feel like you've maybe lost something like the performance in crosswinds or into the wind or whatever that may be? But I think it, the two golf balls that we chatted about, I think are going to be really, really good for you. I'm excited to try them out. Awesome. Okay, guys, um, a simple little process that we went through with Paige there, but could be about as impactful as any, any part or any way in which we can help you with your equipment, getting those loft lies, lies dialed in. You've got to have predictability and you've got to have performance. That's that's the two things a yeah. loft lie session really brings out. So make sure that if you are not working with a club fitter, there's <laughs> there's no excuses now. There's 100 and <laughs> nearly, I think nearly 140 uh, club champions all over the, uh, the US. We've got them in the Australia, the UK and Canada. We are everywhere. There's no excuse for not finding us. So make your way to a club champion store get a loft and lie session if that's what you want to start the process with. And if it leads to something down the line, great. We're happy 
any way we can sort of get you in store, that'd be fantastic. So stay tuned for more and we'll see you again soon.